Hello and welcome. I'm Raghav. And today we are going to start and create a Cucumber project for our WebDriver IO framework. This is going to be very easy and very interesting. And I will teach you from scratch. So do not worry if you have uh, never worked on Cucumber or BDD project. I will take you step by step from scratch. So we will first see what is BDD and what is Cucumber and then we will start the project setup for our WebDriver IO Cucumber BDD framework. We will create some feature files. We will see what are feature files. How do we create the feature files? We will also see how do we generate the step definitions and how do we auto generate the step definitions. Now, if you are completely new and you do not understand what is uh, what are feature files, what are step definition, do not worry. I will explain it uh, to you. And uh, we will also see how we can give the location of our step definition folder in our configuration file, and then we will create and run some BDD Cucumber tests. And I will keep all the notes, all the links in the description of this video so you can refer from there. And if you have any, uh, if you face any issues or if you face any problems during this session, you can always let me know in the comment section below and I will read and reply to you. So let's get started. And before we start with the setup, let us see very quickly what is BDD and what is Cucumber. So BDD is behavior, driven development. So uh, what exactly is this? Uh, let me take an example. If I take, go to this, uh, some demo website, uh, let me just go to this, the internet login application. Here is the login page. So normally when we write our test cases, we have steps to enter username enter password and click on login button. And we write our test scripts in our project in our automation frameworks. And similarly, if the developer team will implement uh, this functionality or they will write the code to implement this functionality, they will also write in their own uh, frameworks, projects and programming language. And that will not be understandable by others, non-technical teams or other teams. So uh, BDD is a way, BDD is a process, is a way where we create our test cases, we create our scenarios and user stories in a very simple English-like language, which can be understood by every team. So for example, if I have to create a feature file and a scenario for the same test, that is the login test, I will say we use some keywords like given, when, and then. These are called the Gherkin language or the Gherkin keywords in BDD. And to create a scenario, I will say something like given, user is on login page when user enters username and password and clicks on login button, then user is navigated to the home page. Now here you can see this uh, is a very plain English like a uh, scenario and it can be understood by everyone and that is the entire concept of BDD that we have a single source of truth, a single documentation that will be followed by every team. And then the teams will implement this in their own way. For example, the dev team will use the same document and then will write code for this. The QA teams or the automation QA teams will use the same document and they will write their automation or QA script. Okay, so in our case, uh, we will write our scripts that is to implement this uh, functionality, this scenario, and that will be called as step definition, or we also call it as uh, glue code. So step definition or glue code, that is what we refer to whatever scripts we will write for this scenario, that will be the backend scripts, okay? And uh, if you want to know more about BDD, what exactly is, why, how it started, and what exactly we do in an organization in BDD process, you can go on my website that is automationstepbystep.com. And here uh, I have uh, I have created a complete playlist on BDD. Uh, this is Cucumber BDD. And then if you see here, there will be a playlist called Basics of BDD. Yes. Here I have explained everything from scratch about BDD, what it is, how it starts in an organization, what are the different phases. So if you see this one, you can see what is BDD and how it starts, uh, how it is done in an organization, a complete workflow. You can check this one if you want to learn more about BDD. Okay, so uh, with this, let us 
go to our steps, how to set up WebDriver IO Cucumber BDD framework. Step number one is we will create a folder and open it in VS Code. So let me just create a folder, a new folder. You can go to any location on your system and create a new folder. I'm going to my E drive and I have a projects folder here. I have a WebDriver IO folder here and here I'm going to create a new folder. I will call it as WebDriver IO Cucumber. Okay, and a Cucumber is a tool to implement BDD. Okay, so Cucumber tool to implement BDD in projects. There are many tools, many libraries using which you can implement the BDD process and Cucumber is one of them and is the most widely used BDD tools, okay? So with that, we have created a folder. We will go to our VS code and open this folder there. You can go to file and then open folder or we can directly drag and drop our folder in VS code and I will say, yes, I trust this folder and it has come here. And then we will go to the terminal. And here we will run the commands to set up a node project. So the command to set up a node project is npm init hyphen y. We have seen this in earlier sessions as well. And then we will run npm init wdio to do the web driver IO setup. So let me do that. I will say npm init space hyphen y and hit enter. And this will start the node project and it has created a package.json file. And now I will say, I'll clear the terminal. Uh, let me expand or maximize the terminal. And here I will say npm init wdio. And this will install our wdio library and then we'll start the setup process. So it is now initializing the project. And then it will ask us for some options, some questions. And this is where we will, um, when we when it asks us the question for what framework do you want to use, we will select Cucumber. Okay, so this is in progress. And let's just wait. And uh, I'm going to show you some plugins as well in VS Code that you can use, uh, which will help you in your Cucumber or any BDD project. So yes, it has started. Now it is asking us for some questions and options. So this I will press enter. Enter means the first option, which is Y. Here I will again go with the default local and Y. Where's your automation back and look at it. I'll go with my local machine. That is default option and hit enter. And here is the question, which framework do you want to use? So here you can select, you can press the arrow keys and go to Cucumber and press enter. So we are going to select Cucumber here. Then again, enter. We want to use a compiler. No, we want WebDriver IO to auto-generate some files. So if you press enter or say yes and enter, it will auto-generate some feature files and step definition, which will be very handy. So I'll just press enter so that it will generate the files. Again, the location, I will press enter. So it will take this location. First step definition, I will press enter again. And then do you want page object model? So I will press enter. Yes, we want it. We have already uh, seen page objects, but I'll, I'll tell you what happens here. Uh, this also, I will press enter. And now we have got option for selecting the reporter. As of now, I'll go with the default. I will show you what are the reporters you can use later. As of now, I'll just press enter. And this is wait for Chrome driver, all these options, default options. And then I will again press enter and it will start the installation process. All right, so this is now getting installed. Should be pretty fast. So this is all uh, getting set up and everything is done and everything is success. If I now check my project, you can see we have got our folders and files here. So the first thing you can see is our config file that is webdriver wdio.conf.js. So this is our configuration file. And here, let me show you this file. So here we have all our configurations. 
And here, now you can see under the spec section, it is showing us that the files under the feature folder having extension dot feature will be considered as the spec files or the test files. Okay, so now we will create all our tests in files which have dot feature extension. And you can see all these configurations, max instances, timeouts, wait for timeout, connection retry count, services. In services, you can see we have got Cucumber here. Uh, in framework, we have got Cucumber here. Framework is Cucumber. And then here, reporters, as of now, we have gone with default. And now here you can see a section for Cucumber options. So these are the Cucumber options. The first one is the location of our step definition files. And you can see all these options here. Okay, as of now, it is referring a specific file, but I will show you how you can refer all the files from a folder. Okay, so this is our configuration file. And if I go to the features folder, you can here see we have got a demo feature file created, which is login.feature. And it is a login scenario. Now, in case you are not getting this formatting and colors, don't worry, this is coming uh, via a plugin. So if you go to the extensions, section of your VS code and search for Cucumber, you can find several Cucumber or BDD plugins. For example, this one is there, Cucumber Gherkin full support, you can take this, Cucumber is there, I have taken this one and uh, I have found this, is, uh, this has some advantages. I will show you why I have taken this plugin. So I have taken this Cucumber plugin and with, the, with this, you will see all these formattings and all these uh, color coding in your feature files. So I'll go back to my feature file and show you. Okay, so you can see here it is given. First we say feature, and this is the name of the feature we are testing. And then we give the scenario and this is the scenario we are testing. So a feature file can have multiple scenarios and this is the steps of the scenario. Given I am on login page, when I log in with username and password, then I should see a flash message saying, and these are the values for username, password, and message. I will show you how this is created. We will create a sample uh, feature and scenario, and then I will show you how this is done. Before that, one more thing I want to show you that will be very handy for you is, if I do a right click on any of these steps given when and, I have got a option go to definition. And when I click on this go to definition, it takes me to the step definition of that particular step. And you can see, we have got a folder called step definitions and under that we have a file created already that is steps.js. Now, just in case you do not have all these demo feature and files already created, do not worry. I'm going to show you how to do that, but just for some uh, references, I'm showing you the, all this so that it will be handy for you when you start creating your feature files and step definitions. So you can do like this. And again, this functionality is coming from the Cucumber plugin that I have added. And this is one of the advantages that I have found in that Cucumber plugin. In some of the other plugins, this feature that is going to the step definition directly from this feature steps was not uh, clean, was not proper, but this one is very clean. That is why I have taken the Cucumber extension of VS Code. Also the same thing you can do by pressing and holding the control key on your keyboard. If you are on Mac, you can press the command key. And then when you hover over any of these steps, you can see these gets converted into links and you can just click on these and it will again take you to the glue code or the step definition of that particular step. Okay. And we can auto generate these steps. I will show you that as well. So uh, we have done step number three. We have selected the options and framework and for cucumber. We have seen the configuration file and now let us before we actually create some feature files and step definitions, let us just run the demo files that we have got, the demo feature and see everything is working fine or not. So I will go to my terminal and I will just say npx wdio. We have seen the different uh, commands we use for running. npx wdio will run all the spec files as mentioned in the configuration file. So this should run this feature. So it opens the browser and yes, you can see it is testing and it has tested two times because we have two sets of data and I will show you how this is done. So this is working fine. And now we will create 
some uh, more feature files and see how we can create feature and scenarios and then we can create the step definition. So go to the features folder and here I will create a new file. You can also just do a right click and say new file. And I will say, I want to test a login feature. I will say login dot demo dot feature. You can give it any name with the extension dot feature. And it should be uh, present under the features folder only directly under the features folder because we have seen the configuration only the files with dot feature extension placed under the features folder will be taken as the spec files. Okay. So let me just go to this uh, website login page. We will enter username, password and click on login. So the first thing I will do here is I will give, I will say feature on the top and colon and I will say test login functionality. You can give any title here. And then I will create a scenario. I'll say scenario. And you can also see I'm getting this auto suggestions. And I will say check login with valid credentials. Credentials means username and password. Okay. Now I will give the actual steps that is given when and then. So here given, I will say user is on login page. I will show you how to correct all this formatting in a moment, but as of now, I'm just adding the steps when user enters username and password and clicks on login button then user is navigated to the home page okay and to correct the formatting you can uh, do a right click and say format document and you can see it has correct the formatting now if you see here given is like a Precondition, I'm saying given user should be on the login page. When is like an action, when user enters username and password, and is some more of the earlier type that is again some action and clicks on login button, and then is like the outcome or the expected result. Then user is navigated to the home page. So this is our simple scenario. And you can also see we are getting these uh, yellow or brown lines, underlines under all these steps. That means these are not yet implemented or we do not have a matching step definition for these steps. Again, if you do a right click, you can see if I say go to definition, it is saying no definition found for this particular step. So now the next step is we have to implement the step definition. Okay. Also, if you try to run this now, if you try to run this particular scenario, it will throw error because we do not have the step definition implemented. So that is the next step. We have to create the step definition or glue code for this scenario. So I will go to the step definitions folder and create a new file. And here I will call this as login.demo.steps. It should, it can be any name with the extension .js. Okay. Now here I will create the steps given when and then function for each step. But if you do not want to do it manually, there are two options, you can auto generate these step definition. The first one is you can use a Cucumber JS utility, command line utility, which is present within our node modules folder. So if you see our node modules folder, which is here, you will, there is a dot bin folder and here you will see there is a Cucumber JS CMD, this utility that we can use. And for that, I can just call this from the terminal, I will say node. I am just pressing NOD and press tab on my keyboard. It should auto complete dot bin and then cucumber JS. I can say dot CMD also or just cucumber JS should also work. And when I run this, it will check all the unimplemented steps or feature steps and then give us some snippets that we can directly use. So you can see. It is showing us all this, which is in unimplemented. And I can just copy this from here, all these functions and go to my 
step definition file that I have created, which is this one, and just paste all these functions here. So this was given, this was when, there's one more way, which I will tell you in a moment. Let me just complete this one first. This was again when, because this is the continuation of when, therefore it is again showing with when function and then user is navigated to the home page. This is the function for the then step. Okay, so you can now see we have got all these functions. I can do a right click and say format document. So it will correct the formatting. If it asks you for the options for formatting, you can press, you can select Cucumber if it is, it has more options. And I can just delete all these extra code. I'm pressing control X to delete the entire lines. So you can read it properly. Okay, so this is how we implement the step definition. For every step, we have got this function. Given user is on login page. So there's a given function when user enters username and password, and this should exactly match the, the uh, steps of the feature, steps of the scenario, and then only it will match it. And you can save this. And now if I go back to my feature file, and now if I check, you can see now it is, when I press control on my keyboard and hover over these steps, they are converted into these links. That means now they have the step definition. I can control click or I can do a right click and say go to step definition, both will work. So you can see these are now working fine and now I can add the actual code. So whatever you want to do here, for example, here we will navigate to the URL. Here we will add the commands to enter username and password, all that we can do now. Now the other way is to generate the step definition, there is a plugin, this extension, which is Cukes uh, step definition generator. This one, Cukes step definition generator. I have found this is very useful. So you can get this. I have already installed it. You can install it. And then once you have got this, you can just go to any of your feature file, any of your scenario, and you can select for whatever steps you want to generate the step definition. You can select one or multiple steps. For example, I will select all of these. And then when you do a right click, you will get this option, generate step definition, copy to clipboard, default file path, dynamic file path. So I will select the first option that is copy to clipboard. And then I can go to my step definition file and I'm just going to remove all this and I will paste the copied step definition. And you can see this is a little better because it is using these regular expressions. So this looks a little better. So I can again remove these extra code. So here, this is fine. Now, if you now try to run your feature, again, you will get an error because we have to also get the given when and libraries. So if you see this uh, demo step definition file, you can see at the top, it is saying constant given when then, which is required from this. WDIO Cucumber Framework Library. So this should be added at the top of your step definition. Otherwise it will fail. So I will add this. As of now, we have not implemented the actual steps that we will do in a moment, but this is what is important. We should do this. And if you run this now, even now it will fail. The reason is in our WebDriver IO config file that is wdio.conf.js in the required, in the Cucumber options require section, it is referring a particular step definition file, which is steps.js. And we do not want this. We want that any file, which is under the step definitions folder can be considered for the step definition. So for that, I will again, instead of hard coding this name steps, I will say star.js. So this will now refer from any JS file, which is present in the step definitions folder. So now this all settings are done. And now we should be good to check our run and check our feature. This will actually not run the actual test case, but this time this should pass if everything is fine because we have already done all the setup. So let me try to run. I will say npx wdio and for running this particular feature, I will say hyphen hyphen spec and give the location, which is features and login.demo.feature. 
So save and run, and let us now check if it runs fine. So this is all fine, and yes, you can see it is running fine. All the four steps are passing. So now we can add the actual code to our step definition file. Okay. Now here, this is the first step, which is saying a given user is on login page. That means we have to navigate to the login page. So I will say here, await browser. And I don't want to use this auto suggested supported browser. I will press escape and say dot URL and then give the login page URL here. Okay. Also, we have to use async before this function declaration that we have learned. We use async and then await. So this is our web driver IO code commands. So this is as we have seen earlier, then user enters username and password again. Here I will say async and then I will say await and then dollar dollar single dollar sign means find single element double dollar sign means find multiple elements again this we have learned earlier and here I will give the locator for the username and then I will say set value I will copy the locators in a moment I will add the locators in a moment but just I'm completing all the commands and then I will give the value of username then again, I will say await. And here I will give the locator of the password box. And then again, I will say dot set value and will give the value for password. Then click on login button. Here again, I will say I will use async here. And then here I will say await. And the object locator or the login button will come here and then here we use the click action this is click and then after this we will say user is navigated to the home page uh, we will see what uh, what to check here but for now let us complete this objects and their values so here I have to get the object locator for username box. So I will go to username and do a right click and say inspect. And let us see the locators or the properties of this element. So we have name and we have ID. I can take ID and for ID, we use hash. If we have class, we use dot. So I will say hash and the value of ID and then the value of username here, which is Tom Smith. So I'll copy and paste the value. This completes the enter of username command. Then for password, again, I will do a right click on the password and say inspect. Uh, here we have got, again, we have got name and ID. I will use ID. So I will say hash and the value. And then, uh, sorry, it is here. Hash and the value. And then value for password is super secret password. So I'll just copy this here. Okay. And I will save as well. Then next step is to click on the login button. So I will go to the login button, right click and inspect. And here we do not have a very specific property here for login button. So I can use the kind of this element, which is button. And then we have type equals submit. So this is what we can use to create a unique locator for this object. So I will say here, uh, this is of kind button. And then I will say type equals submit. And then the action is click. And now we have to check user is navigated to the home page. And for that, uh, let me manually log in and see what all we can check. So this is the username. This is the password. And I will click on login. And here, on successful login, we get this. We get this page. So you can check anything here. You can check this message or this logout button. Uh, if I see this message and if I say inspect, so here we have got the ID, which is flash. I can use this. So I can say, again, make sure to use async and await if you're using the latest version of WebDriver IO. I will say await dollar. 
and the ID, which is flash. I have to copy it from here. Okay. Uh, async, the spelling is wrong. That's why there was an error. Okay, so this is done. And here, uh, to actually check the message, we can extract the message from this object. And for that, uh, we have seen this in the earlier session as well. There is the expect functionality, expect library in WebDriver IO. So if I just check for WebDriver IO expect, you can get the documentation of the expect library. And here you can see all that you can check with this. We can check uh, URL title, we can check is element displayed or present or clickable focused. Uh, the attributes we can check is clickable or disabled, enabled, selected, unselected, checked, unchecked. And then we have got this to have text and to have text containing. This is what we can use. So here we say await, expect, and give the element locator. And then we use this function to have text containing and give the text value here. So that is what I will use. I will say here uh, expect and keep this locator within brackets like this and i will say dot and the function that is to have text containing and give the value of the text or message which is you logged into a secure area okay i can hide this sidebar by pressing control b on my keyboard so now you can see this is our complete step definition Okay, so now when I run this feature, when I run this feature file, it should now run our actual test and let us now see. And I will also show you how to parameterize uh, the values. But before that, let us just run and check. Save your files and run the feature. So yes, it goes to the login page, enters username, password and checks the message. And uh, let's see, I think there is some failure. I will check what is the failure here. So here the failure is, uh, then user is navigated to the home page. There is, it has failed. And let me see why it has failed. So, okay, if I see here, Okay, I think there is a space. Uh, you logged into a secure area. So some issue here, let me just fix this. So there is some space here, which I have added. Yes, because of this space, it has failed. So it should pass now. I will run again. I'll clear the terminal and I'll run it again. And hopefully it should pass this time. You can do hands-on along with me. If you face any issues, you can let me know in the comment section. I will see all my comments and I will reply to you. So yes, this time everything is passed, okay? Now, the next thing is, uh, if you have noticed in our sample feature file that we got auto-generated, which is this one login.feature, we have parameterized the values of username, password, and message, and we have given multiple values here. So that makes our scenario reusable with multiple sets of data. I can use the same scenario with multiple username, password, and messages. So how to do that? So for that, I will go back to my feature file and whatever values you want to parameterize, you can put them within conical brackets. So let's say for username, I will put username within conical brackets like this. And uh, password as well, I will put under conical brackets. And then I will say here, uh, then user is navigated to the home page. Instead of this, I can say then this message is displayed. So I'm doing this so that I can use it for both positive and negative login scenarios. Okay, so I'm changing this one. And now I will create a, you can also see now there is a error or a yellow line under these steps because now these are no longer implemented. There is no matching step definition. So we will fix that. But before that, let us create a examples section. 
So whenever we do parameterization, we create examples section. And here we give a pipe symbol and give the parameters, which is username. Again, a pipe symbol. And the next parameter is password. Again, a pipe symbol. And the next parameter is message. And then again, a pipe symbol at the end. So these are the headers. Now I will give the values. So the value for username. First, let us give the uh, valid values. So the here username will come, here password will come. And let me just copy the message, which is the valid message. So we have username as Tom Smith. I'll copy this, add it here. Then password is super secret password. And I will add it here. And then we have got the message. Now I will create the next line, one more set of data for let us say invalid credentials. So here I will say username is something like user one, two, three, then password is pass one, two, three. And then here, the message that we get, I have to check. So if I give invalid username and password and I log in, I should see this message, your username is invalid. So this I will copy here. Okay, now to correct all this formatting, you can do a right click and say format document. So all this will be formatted and you can save as well. Okay, now here, as we know, now there is no matching step definition for these two steps. That is when user enters username and password, and then this message is displayed. So I will do, I will select this step, do a right click and say generate step definition, copy to clipboard. And we are getting this from our Qux step definition generator extension. I'll copy this, go to the feature file, or go to the step definition file. And here I will say, I will copy this step definition here. Okay, and you can see, this is how it looks like now. And I'll just copy the same commands from the earlier function. I'll copy them here. Okay, I have to use async, otherwise I will see errors. All right, now, if you see, if I go back to my feature file and I see, so now this has a matching step definition and it is taking me here. So this is fine. However, this will still fail because here, when we, when this step is executed, it will take the values of this Tom Smith and super secret password. And this will, this will not match to any step definition here because here it is again, hard coded this username and password. So we have to change this into a regular expression. I will tell you about regular expressions in a moment. So instead of username, I'm saying in brackets dot start, this means it can match anything, any value here. And here as well, I will say in brackets, I will say dot star. So this is a regular expression. Now, just in case you are completely new to regular expressions, you can go to this site that is regex one. It is a very good site to learn regular, regular expressions or regex. Here you can see, uh, if you say backslash D, it will match any digit. This will match any non-digit character. If you say dot, it will be any character. If you say star zero or more of repetitions of that. So when I say dot and star, that means it can match any character and they can be any number of repetitions of that character. So that is why it will now match anything that I give there. Also, if you see in the earlier step definition file that was auto generated here, also these regular expressions are used. Okay. And, uh, I have written a story on this as well. If you go on my website and go to this link, uh, read this story, it will take you to this Mickey and mini stories. This is the link automation step by step.com forward slash stories here. I have written a story on regular expressions. Here it is a story of regex and here this will 
uh, teach you from very basics what are regular expressions and how you can learn them. So this will be handy if you want to learn more. But as of now, this will work. One more very important thing is here, we also have to now pass the parameters, username and password instead of these hard-coded values. So here I will pass two parameters, username. The, the names can be anything, but it is good to keep some meaningful names. And this is what I will pass in place of these hard-coded values for username and password. So here, whatever comes in the username will be referred here and whatever comes in the password will be referred here. And this will be coming from here. So when this runs for the first time in the username, this username Tom Smith will go in the password. This will go when it runs for the second time, this username and this password will go. Okay. And that is what will be referred here and will be entered. Okay. Now in the feature file, make sure that whenever you parameterize your values and use the examples section, this scenario is no longer valid. Here, this we have to change to scenario outline. Okay. So whenever we parameterize, we have to use scenario outline instead of scenario. And you can also format the document. Now, again, uh, for this particular step, this message is displayed. Again, we have to change. So I'm just going to comment out this earlier when function, which is no longer needed. You can select everything and just press control forward slash on your keyboard. You can just delete or comment out. And for this one as well, uh, I have to first get the step definition for this. So I am copying this and right click and generate step definition and copy and paste it here. And the same thing I have to do here, instead of this hard coded message, I will say it can match anything. So dot star and use the async keyword here. And then I have to pass the parameter message. And then this thing, I will copy and paste from my earlier function, but I will change this hard coded value for message with the parameter message that I am getting here. And again, now I can remove or comment out this particular function. Okay, so now this looks fine. And I can also see there are no unimplemented steps. All the steps are implemented. If I go to this, now it is able to find the step definition and we are able to implement all the steps. So this time when I run this feature, it should run two times. When I run this scenario, it should run two times, once with a valid set and next time with the invalid set. Okay. And uh, here you can check. I will just go to my terminal, clear the terminal and go to the last command save all your files and run the feature file. And let's see this time what happens. So it opens the browser. This is the first run, first test, and this is passed. And this is the second test, which is also passed because we have already implemented this. So you can see all these steps are passing. Okay, so this is done. Now, if you want to implement page object model, you can see there is a page objects folder and then there are some uh, files and classes for each page. We have already learned page object model in the earlier session and it will be implemented exactly in the same way. So just in case you want to implement page objects as well, you can do, you can just follow that and it will be implemented in the, in the same way. And once you create your page objects and classes, they will be referred in your step definition file. You can check this, for example, the auto generated file that we have here, you can see it is referring our login page, the login page that it has created and using this constant login page and using this constant. Now it is referring to all the functions of that login page class. So we have already done this in the earlier session. And if you want to implement, it will be implemented exactly as we have seen in our earlier session. And then, uh, so we have already seen this auto generate step definition coming to the reports. So there are a lot of reports that you can implement. If you go to web driver IO and find reports, you will see there is a documentation for reports 
and there are multiple reports. So we have allure reports, concise report, J unit, spec, HTML, Cucumber, JSON, Mocha, awesome. You can try any of these. If you want to try allure reports, then we already have a session earlier for allure reports and LO report will be implemented exactly in the same way as we have seen in the earlier session in the LO report session. So you can try that. And in case you want to implement any other uh, reports, you can check this and implement it in your project. So this is how you can create a BDD Cucumber project for WebDriver IO. I hope this was very useful. I will see you soon. Thank you for watching and never stop learning.